As we watch Matt and Guy in this room preparing for destruction, it makes you wonder why. Why would anyone want to kill? And why would two brothers be looking for revenge? Well, to answer those questions, we need to travel back in time, back to their births. Matt and Guy were born to a poor family that weren't able to provide for either one of them, and they were both put up for adoption at birth. Both of the boys were orphans and were bounced from family to family due to their mischievous behavior, and no family seemed to be able to control. At 15 years old, each of the boys were finally fed up with all the moving, changing, and inconsistency that, de that they decided it was time to make their own decisions. They found this place that trained Maine to be hitmen and decided that this was what they were born to do. Each of the boys entered this business, none being known to them that they were brothers. Later on, many conversations later, they realized that they were, they were brothers and they needed to stick together no matter what because they were all they each had. Over the years, these brothers became inseparable and were the best in the business. So any high priority cases would come their way first. Man, I'm so glad that we found each other and we're in this game together. It makes life that much easier. I'm with you on that. Should I be getting any recent hits? No, but I feel something kind of good in my bones. Something big will come out of here. Mr. Forrest has been expecting you. He'll meet you around back. Well, look who it is. Matt and Guy. How you boys been? Cut the chit chat, boys. Yeah, we're not here for small talk. That's the way you want to play it? Who's your next target? No guns. There's some things you should know about the project. Beefed up security. That's why I got you guys a couple selections of necklaces. Let's see them. Those are some mighty fine necklaces you have there. This one's too fine. You better not be messing with us. Or maybe this clean cut. Alright. We'll see you first. We'll see you shortly. Emma and Stella, longtime friends since elementary school, had reservations at the best five star restaurant in town, the Ballroom. The ladies deserved a break after all the hard work that they had put in the past few months. These ladies were accountants for a major law firm and had been working on this spe one specific case for way too long. Wow, this place is phenomenal. I have to agree with you 100%. This night cannot be more deserved. Welcome to the ballroom, ladies. It's nice to have you this evening. Could I offer you ladies anything to drink? Yes, I'll have a glass of wine too. Oh, um, wine puts me to sleep, so can we have some water, please? Sure. Then. Good evening, ladies. I have a water and a wine. Is there anything else I can get for you? Oh no, thank you. That's fine. Okay, well, I just want to let you know I am the manager and I'll be watching over to make sure it goes good. Thank you. Thank you. Did that manager seem strange to you? No, I don't think so. We've just been working too much. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking things over too much. I just think we need some more human interaction. I really yeah, do. I guess so. Hello, ladies. How is the wine? Isn't it to die for? Emma lands face first into the plate, bleeding out. Stella is completely stunned by what she just witnessed. She gets all her things in a hurry, rushes towards the front door, and leaves without saying a word. Mr. Forrest, I don't know what to do. Last night, I was at dinner with my friend Emma, and she was stabbed right in front of me. So what did this man look like? 
the restaurant was so dark, it was hard to see. I don't know, maybe he was like 5'5", five, five, maybe white, maybe a little darker. I, I don't know, it was just so hard to see. Great to tell you, this was, that sounds like a man named Matt, the paid assassin. The best thing I could do or advise you to do was go into hiding. But I'll do the same. So Stella, still confused on what happened last night, why in the world anyone would rather would be after her, did what Mr. Forrester said, and went into hiding. Mr. Forrest also took his own advice because he knew that he had given the brother the wrong name, and they would eventually find out. In the meanwhile, the brothers also went into hiding, but one day, they were told by an anonymous source that Mr. Forrest had given them the wrong name. The brothers weren't too happy about this news. So for 10 years, they hid out, didn't take any more jobs, and watched Mr. Forrest day in and day out. At this point in life, Mr. Forrest believed it was safe to come out of hiding because the brothers must have moved on and hadn't had another job about what he had done. All the while, the brothers were plotting the revenge. Look at him, after all these years, thinking he got away. I guess it's time we pay Mr. Forrest a visit. Sounds like a plan, brother. What do you have in mind? I say we give him back his necklace. The brothers showed a smile of sweet revenge, so they traveled across town to Mr. Forrest's place one last time.